It's only a few days until the new Trivium album The Sin and the Sentence is being released by Warner and I had the chance to talk to Madame Paolo about something really different, their childhood and the root of their passion for music. Enjoy! Thank you for giving us the chance to have a little th smooth and gentle interview with you. As far as you remember, what was the first thing you wanted to become as you were a kid? When I first got the Black Album from a friend, I said, this is the kind of music I want to play. And the very first time I saw 1989 Seattle Binge and Purge by Metallica, I pointed the TV and said, that's what I want to do when I grow up. It was the first thing you ever wanted to become a first musician? First thing. Yep. Yeah, first thing. Um... I mean, when I was a kid, probably went through the usual list of things that kids want to be, like an astronaut or firefighter or something. You know, the the first things you experience when you're a kid, on, seeing on TV or in, in person. But definitely a similar thing to Matt, like just seeing Metallica. Uh, I think it was King Nothing on MTV, and that was sort of like the spark in terms of like. Oh, I, I think I'd like to play in something like this, play music like this. I had been playing maybe bass for about two years at that point, so that was sort of the awakening of like, oh, I'm supposed to be into metal, and it clicked, and then haven't looked back since. And then you pl planned it straight forward to become that person. Yeah, I mean, that was just, I mean, you always think in the back of your mind, like, well, if it doesn't work, you know, maybe you can do something else, but I think you kind of have to go all in, you know? There, there really is no other uh, backup plan. Because I think if you have a backup plan or you, you try to work out the backup plan first, you're never going to do the thing you want to do. And it's just like we all just kind of dove right into it. You know, we we, we skipped uh, college to do this. And this was, uh, you know, we just went all in and just that's all you can do. You have to do this by heart, everything. Yeah, you know. there's no compromise. You have to, it's like, this is what I'm going to do. And you have to just make it happen. We talked about this moment you saw Metallica on TV. Um, I think every person has at least one special moment, um, a special precious moment in his childhood he remembers perfectly clear and with nostalgia um, that has a deeper meaning for the person he grew up to. And what was your special precious moment? I guess the moment that our heroes acknowledged us as a, as a legitimate band. I remember we did the Master of Puppets cover for the Kerrang! issue that had like all the bands covering Metallica songs off Master, and we read that Lars really liked the cover. And then we met them shortly after when they had us we had they had us open for them for a couple of days in European festivals, and they acknowledged us as peers. It felt like it felt like they welcomed us as we were equals, which was insane to us. You know, I remember the first time I met all of them, I was like stuttering my words, but then they ended up becoming good friends of ours and same thing with meeting Iron Maiden and then Maiden bringing us out for six and a half weeks and being cool to us and I think once the moment that we saw our heroes recognized we were a legit band and actually liked our band we knew we'd done something correct uh, for me it was probably playing my first live show uh, it was like called the Italian festival at my middle school and um, played like three covers i was supposed to sing them and i was scared and i didn't but we still played but that was such a, an exhilarating moment and i think once i kind of experienced that you know that was sort of it's kind of like you're chasing after that for the rest of your life you want to have that same experience and you have to keep upping the ante with like bigger shows and crazier performances and that was sort of the initial one that you know showed me what it feels like to perform for people even though there wasn't that many people but it is a it's an exciting feeling and you know when i see other bands play or like young kids playing for the first time whether it's you know performing online maybe say a cover on youtube or their own song or a band playing in a club it's like i know that feeling of when it's your first time actually yeah. playing it's a really exciting feeling and we still get that you know when we do these shows it's a there's a confidence now when we play but it's still that same excitement when you step on stage like wow this is crazy Oh, that's great because many musicians told me that it's shrinking over the time and it's not the, that identity. <laughs> that's crazy. Those, those guys aren't in it. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I also know, I know it, like you can become very like, it becomes very normal and it is a true like, I mean, when you do these shows all the time, it becomes normal, but you have to always be pushing yourself to like learn and play 
your music like bands that just play the same set list every day of course yeah. it's gonna suck over yeah. time that's like uh that's like you may as well go like you know clock in at a regular job if you're gonna play the same set but I mean, we like to play you know other songs from our set and it makes it fun for us i think even the proof of that we still enjoy it is like all of our friends and family and everyone that watched our live stream even yesterday's show like you guys were smiling the entire time and yeah of course things like the travel or the boredom are waiting for the shows and get monotonous or mm-hmm. maybe if you're playing you know, the same venue on a tour and stuff but it's it should always be fun and you should always be striving to get better at what you do i mean that's why we all practice so damn much that's why off tour i sing so much and i and we all work at our craft because we love what we do and we want to be the best we can for our fans that's perfectly great and uh, the person i uh, just quoted um he's a professional drummer and uh, the first gig he ever played uh, at a big show it was with 16 years yeah. and um, he was over in LA to perform with some singer songwriter together uh, in front of 30,000 people mm-hmm. and it was his his initial gig his first gig yeah. and maybe it um, maybe it was too much for the first time and then possible you you're trying to to catch up with it all the time but it's uh, I mean not not every show is gonna be like the show of your life you know and you have bad shows and you have some that are just you know maybe you're just not feeling it that day Mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean like the entire tour is like ruined you know you just everyone has those sort of days but i mean if you're not enjoying playing then you you might want to stop you know because like people get really like you could feel that the audience can yeah you could feel and also it's like if if it's not making you happy you should find what makes you happy because that's more important than the money because yeah, for us it's like 50 or 50,000 we're going to do the same show we're going to do a great show 500 people 500,000 people doesn't yeah. matter because he came to see you and if you're playing and you're bored yeah they think you're douchebags and coming over with this um were douchebags what was your <laughs> <laughs> what was your time in school like have you been the douchebags or have you been <laughs> no. the, the silent kids in the corner um you played video games at a very young age kind of the mix. whole day and um in this time gamers were not the cool kids i guess yeah. how was it like back oh, then it was like uh I was lucky. I was never like a bullied kid or anything. Okay. I was definitely the only kid wearing a Cryptopsy shirt or a Nile shirt uh, to school. I remember I had, I had like super long hair, the cutoff camo shorts and combat boots. And no one ever gave me a hard time about that. I could see how probably the only metal kid would probably be ostracized in middle school or high school, but I just stuck stuck to my guns. I remember eighth grade is when I got into metal. So I started dressing like a metal kid and grew my hair out, got into trivium in eighth grade. And all of high school, it's just, this is what I like, this is metal, this is who I am, and video games have always been a big part of my life, especially like Final Fantasy games or the Call of Duty games. I was playing Mario while I was still speaking Japanese with my mom. So, yeah, it is nice. It is nice to see that, yeah, the bands are the cool guys now, the gamers are the cool guys now. It's you just got to stick to what you love and not try to fit into something. I think that's that's that must be a very difficult thing. I mean, if I had to relive everything again and having to try to fit into like cool groups, that's that's not what it's about. It's about finding what you love, getting good at it, sticking with that, and you'll find people that like the same thing. Uh, I mean, school was kind of a mix for me. I like I definitely was a, could be an asshole to people and people were uh I don't know, it was a bit of, uh, I experienced everything, but, uh, you know, once I got into music and games, like, I definitely, I loved going to arcades, you know, Mortal Kombat was definitely my game. Um, yeah, once music kind of came to the equation, I kind of, like, didn't care about, like, anything with school. Like, do, like, I did the work, I did good, but, like, the whole, you know, the in-group, out-group stuff, I didn't care. Um, and I've kind of carried that with me, it's like, I really don't care if like we're part of anything as long as like the core group trivium everyone that's involved with it as long as we like what we're doing you know that's all that matters and i kind of took that from school because like the the middle school years were like you know where everyone's kind of like making fun of everyone and just the awkward school time you know but then once you got like your hobbies and stuff you're into like it seems really pointless to go through all that um played a little bit of sports uh, kind of just bounced around with with everything in different crowds in school. I think I I like doing that more because then you're not really like having to live up to anyone's uh, you know rules of how to be how to be cool and just did my own thing. And 
by like 11th or 12th grade like music just consumed everything and then trivium was like right after i graduated high school yeah. and like right into it so it was uh everything i took with me from school kind of like right into the band and i feel like uh we all kind of grew up in in the band more than anything was there an embarrassing moment you experienced back then in the time and what was it embarrassing I think everyone's had millions haven't they um, <laughs> what, what was the, the most awful embarrassing moment embarrassing um hmm. i mean i was just like you know you get in trouble and get caught out but i mean that was like so i like that happened a lot in school so i was just like at some point it wasn't embarrassing it was kind of fun funny you know i that's where i like I, schools where i learned to like you know you could really push people's buttons the teachers and stuff and you know i always thought that was fun you know i enjoyed that but uh embarrassing i don't know i can't remember like anything too crazy like the usual stuff that kids go go through in school uh with embarrassment you know maybe maybe your crush didn't like you or something yeah. like that but uh other than that i mean i can't think of anything mostly it was just like either d taking tests going to the principal's office um detention <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know just the that was kind of like the usual thing and then playing soccer after school i think uh for me i, I can remember a couple i remember once on our eighth grade field trip like they all the orlando kids they'd take a train up to new york and i had one of my he i guess i thought he was a close friend of mine but he came from like really good family he was really fortunate he had a lot of stuff and i remember his mom pulled me aside one day she's like you know i want to let you know that if you keep wearing black and band shirts you get beaten up every day in high school and kids are going to make fun of you and you're never going to go anywhere mm -hmm. and that was just like a really like weird low point because i've always been a nice person and i was always like accepting of all lifestyles all other people and she told me that that was just like it was i don't know i don't even know how to describe the feeling but when you're like 12 years old and an adult tells you that you're going to get beaten up every single day in high school no one's going to like you you're going to be picked on and i <laughs> had the nun i went to catholic school and i had a nun like we always wore uniforms but when when it was a dress down day it was right before that festival that i played like i wore a metallica shirt she like came up to me and she's like you're gonna murder someone by the time <laughs> by the time you leave high school and i was like that's so brutal she been like yeah i murdered that face <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> what a like ridiculous thing though i mean yeah. that i mean more though more so than any like student uh you know kids pick on each other that's just the way it is but i mean like for an adult to tell you like you're gonna murder someone that's pretty uh that's pretty intense i had a geography <laughs> teacher i remember they were it was like the anniversary of columbine like a school shooting and mm -hmm. the teacher was talking about some like rumor that was going on in the school and i asked her in the middle of class like what's the rumor about this the school shooting thing you're talking about she's like don't act like you don't you're the kind of person that would do that <laughs> Uh, I was yeah. a geography teacher in eighth grade, and then I had a band teacher also in eighth grade tell me, she pulled me aside, she's like, I want to let you know I'm really worried about, you know, you getting into devil worship and drugs and alcohol because band shirts. So it was all adults, all picking on an eighth grader. And, and did they try to um, get your f feelings at this time um, right, or do they, um, no, they, did they only try to um, convince you not doing this? No, they just shit on you and leave you with it. Yeah. Yeah. They, didn't un wanted to understand what's going no, on no they, 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 they don't maybe. but luckily like my family knew who i was and accepted who i was and wanted me yeah. to be who i am and that's the message we've always pushed we've always pushed with our band yeah. that we're a band for everyone no matter what you believe what you like what you don't like we're we're all about as what as long as you accept the other people yeah as long as are, you know not maybe not into the same things as you yeah we're about what unites us it's about our commonalities not our differences yeah. um <laughs> Matt, you become um, famous really at a really young age um, how was this feeling like and um, how does your view on yourself changed yeah, it was it was time? for all of us I and mean, we were all super young when ascendancy came out we were all or when we all got signed I mean I joined this band when I was 13 Paulo started his band when he was like 10 or 11 a metal band called metal militia and um, we've all been doing it ever since so yeah it's I think for all of us growing up in the public eye has been weird um, nowadays, obviously in our 30s, we have it figured out. But for us, having to be 18, 17, 18, 19 year olds on magazine covers, yeah. trying to figure out how do we want to look, how do we want to present ourselves, how do we want to speak in the public, 
how do we want to be interpreted? Those are very difficult things for teenagers to understand. Mm -hmm. And the only way you could do it is the way we did it. You do some things right and you fuck up on some things and you grow up through it. I'm asking because you, um, you on your YouTube channel, subscribe to Yeah, we get to subscribe yeah. to each other's, man. <laughs> We're gonna trade contacts after. And um, there you said that you had problems with socializing at yeah, even Very through, beginning. I remember even through our first UK tour, that Road Rage tour that went to Europe as well, I never wanted to meet fans, not because I was a dickhead, but because I, I don't, it wasn't classified social anxiety disorder, but I didn't want to see people I knew. I remember even in middle school and high school, I wouldn't want to go to the video store to rent a video because I'd be nervous I'd bump into someone that I knew. For no other reason than like just... Seinfeld episode. <laughs> 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 it's <just> like... <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Um, yeah, it's just peculiarities that but luckily I, I got through it you know it's something like if you're afraid of people and you're in this business <laughs> you either completely get over it like yeah. I did or you spiral into madness <laughs> <laughs> um, you were going through very harsh times um, being criticized by the media in social media and um, bec everything because of your quick uprise I guess yep. oh yeah and Nobody eats till my TV eats. <laughs> <laughs> I love really, that. Now I turn that into a meme. The, thankfully, yeah, yeah, they yeah. they really love to make memes of you. Oh, I love it, man. That's I love really it. Good, yeah. Like if your if your music, well, if the videos and like stuff you post becomes memeable, it's almost like uh, used to be like, oh, it's a bad thing. It's like, no, it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. we accept the hell out of it. Like on on my Twitch, all my emotes are all ugly yeah. faces I've made. So it's like you gotta embrace it. So the hate finally ended up in. Just make yeah, it I, th I think when it was around our teens, well, because well, it makes sense if all of a sudden out of nowhere all these bands and music fans see this band saying, we're going to take over the world and they're 18 years old. It's like, who the fuck are these guys? But those are the goals we've had since we were all 12 years old, 13 years old. So it's like we were the most honest to ourselves and we, we told that to the world. And then we kind of backed off for a minute and now... It's shifted to we want to be the greatest people that we can be. We want to be the best musicians that we can be and the best live band that we can be. And yes, I still want stadiums and I want more pyro than Rammstein and I want more lights than Nine Inch Nails. And those are goals that I actually have and that we all have. If it happens, awesome. If it doesn't, at least we put everything we can into what we do. I think this is a good word to end the interview. Thanks for watching and now go out and buy everything this cute boys drop out. Bye.